what this is. Holy moly. Good evening, Collin State's meeting to order. It's a school board meeting for Thursday, September 19th. May I please have the attendance? Yes, Mrs. Durgan. Here. Mrs. Giftos. Here. Mrs. Glennon. Here. Mr. Gill. Here. Ms. Casalonis. Here. Ms. Layton. Mrs. Sida. Here. Max Bennett. Here. Ms. Caldwell. Here. And you can join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I'm sure we're excited to hear your perspective of what's happening in the schools and congratulations thank you can I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from September 5th 2019 so moved second any discussion all those in favor motion passes unanimously all right 6.2 um, the fall conference for being the MSMA um, is coming up in October, October 24th and 25th. Uh, I'm hoping that everybody has been able to get that on their calendars. We will need to get a head count. We will need to get a head count um, of who is going to be attending from the board at the conference. Hillary and I went last year. It was actually, it was a, it's a really productive time. We learned a lot. We met a lot of people. Um, great seminars that we can attend. So I highly recommend it. One of the pieces that we also need to do tonight is to select a delegate to the delegate assembly. Um, Hillary, where you are a delegate last year, do you mind sharing what happens? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> in uh, shortly the uh, MSBA or MSMA, I'm not sure, I think it, which, whichever one of them, um, they will send out a list of resolutions um, or a proposed list of resolutions, and those are things that um, will drive what their legislative agenda is for the following year. Uh, and what happens is there is, um, during one of the sessions, they have an assembly. Each school board that's attending, or is, well, any school board that's a member has an option of sending a delegate, and that person votes on behalf of their board whether to um, support the uh, they do each one individually, and you vote whether to support the resolution or to not support it. Um, they also vote on like the president elect for the following year, um, and some other um, and some other members of their uh, larger board. They they have like a uh, an umbrella board. Um, it's basically just I mean you you already know how you're going to vote because we as a board will go over the resolutions and we will decide. Um, how we, you know, how whether we support them or do not support them as a board, and then your job is to just kind of bring that vote to the delegate assembly. Um, it can be interesting, like super interesting. Um, so it, it's, it's an easy job. Um, you do have to sit out. That that is a session. So like say there's four sessions for the day at the conference, that is one of the sessions. So you you don't have the opportunity to do something else at that time. That's Kind of the the downside to it um, i'm happy to do it again if nobody else wants to do it but if anybody wants to then speak now <laughs> so what you're saying is the delegate assembly is the same day as that conference yes i think it's the second day of the conference and and we're all going to that conference is that how that works or just that would be up? my hope that okay. everybody would attend I didn't understand that. we all have um, the option of going you don't okay. it's not required correct okay as far as um Again, my hope is that everybody is able to attend this. I probably learned more in those two days than I learned the previous 10 months. Um, and that's saying quite a bit given everything that we learned. Um, it's just, it's a great opportunity to find out quite a bit more than we otherwise wouldn't. 
it's similar to other if you it's similar to other conferences I've been to where you are off you have an offering there's sessions during the day and you can choose from you know maybe up to 10 different um, options for each session so you can kind of pick and choose um, either what's most relevant relevant to you personally what's what you think will help you the most like for Scarborough what you know and so there there are a lot of different um, opportunities to hear different speakers, to um, do group work with other boards, that kind of thing. Is there anyone else who's interested in being the delegate for Scarborough? You guys, you get like a tag on your name card that says <laughs> delegate on it. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm happy to do it, but Hillary, it sounds like you're also happy to do it. Do you? It's, I, yeah. I mean, we could arm ourselves if you I know. Want. <laughs> the only thing I wonder is if having um, some more board members experience that, if, is that valuable as a board to have other people do it? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I mean, don't I, know. Honestly, <clears throat> it's some, some people do get up and make statements, and, and sometimes resolutions get argued back and forth like a lot. <laughs> I didn't do that. I mean, I knew our board's position and I wasn't really willing to entertain personally changing my mind because we had already voted. Um, so yeah, I mean, if somebody else wants to do it, I, that's fine. I will give it a go. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, April. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, what I would ask is, I'd love to make the assumption that everyone will attend and if you cannot, if you could let me know just so that we can get registered. Definitely. Um, I would appreciate that. Yep. Great. All right. I think we have to vote on the delegate. Oh, yeah, we do. All those in favor of April as our delegate? Excellent. Passes. Thanks, Hillary. Mm -hmm. um, 6.3, first reading of the policy, JLAA, our wellness policy. Um, this was sent out to everyone. I'm hoping you had a chance to read it. It's pretty meaty, um, so I'd rather not read it to everyone. <laughs> um, I do want to thank Kate and the entire wellness committee for all the work that you did to get us in alignment with the DOE changes. Um, that was a lot of work. It was a lot of back and forth with the attorneys, so I really appreciate everything that you did to help get it to this point. Are there any questions regarding the policy as it was written or anything, Amy or Alicia, that you want to share? Do you want to do the motion? And then yeah, oh, we should. So a motion to approve the first reading. So moved. Second. Now we can have a discussion. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just um, made some comments. I don't know if you want me to go through them, them all or one at a time. I just have a couple of them are questions and then a couple of them are comments. On um, the first page, you talk about Actually, 1.1 is the nutrition standards, and it's all food and beverages sold through the school meals program, including all reimbursable school meals will meet or exceed federal and or state national standards. I'm just wondering if that is in opposition to the fact that we pulled the high school out of the nutrition program, the federal nutrition program. I do not think it is. Um, I'm gonna look to Kate to confirm that. I just remember Peter saying like, mm. This, this, you know, granola bar is all natural, but it doesn't meet the standards. And so I'm wondering if, how that applies in terms of this policy. It, it's a good question. And I think that, that our goal for the district as a whole, including the high school, will be to review each of the um, food items that we want to present and make sure that they meet our standards. They might not necessarily meet the USDA <coughs> wellness standards. Um, but the schools that are in the USDA program will meet it. So this serves um, to keep us in compliance as far as the schools that belong to that um, reimbursement program. And of course, the high school's out of it for the moment, and we think that's going to be okay. a great idea. But it, it doesn't have to apply to them at this time. So are you saying that the word reimbursable makes that so that it only applies to the Sorry. schools that are a part of that program? Exactly. Okay. Thank exactly. Mm -hmm. the, um, the rules are for the schools that are um, participating in the reimbursement program. But again, we're, we're not saying that we're going to go cuckoo at the high school either, that we want to have healthy, good right. food. No, I totally understand that. I just was 
worried about the the language the of language it. Yeah. of it. Yeah. Perfect. Did you have other questions? I do. Nick, oh. did you have? Oh. I just wanted to ask about 1.2F. <clears throat> I remember this conversation briefly, I'm just trying to refresh myself. We'll not sell enhanced caffeinated beverages. I believe that allows us to continue to sell coffee, but that's probably the only caffeinated beverage, right? Um, enhanced caffeinated beverages in our many discussions on the subject. <laughs> um, everybody's laughing because we did a lot of back and forth on this. Um, what we were referring to there were sort of like the monster drinks or the Red Bulls and those kinds of, of beverages, which we don't currently sell. Um, but we also didn't want to necessarily exclude coffee, and, and so coffee and tea would still be available. I, I think I, I would just add to that. Um, we had a, a very lively discussion about, about how it's not always obvious that drinks are enhanced with caffeine. So obviously the, the Red Bull, the Monster, it's very clear that they're full of all kinds of stuff we would rather our, our students not consume. But the other, there's so many other things that are just a little bit more subtle. So that's why we compromised on we're not going to sell any drink in hand. So those waters that presumably look really healthy, they sometimes have caffeine. So we're going to not sell those as well. But we, um, we weren't willing to stop selling coffee and tea. We just thought that would be really unrealistic and it would cause the high school kids to perhaps leave more and go down the street and get whatever they're going to get to drink. So we decided I that... see some high school kids <laughs> <that are> nodding <laughs> on that one. Uh, we decided to um, um, just leave the caffeine for tea and coffee in place. That was my question too. So that's like naturally caffeinated beverages? Are, okay, okay. Right. Um, so the, the next one I have is um, 2.1. It says all food and beverages sold during the school day that are outside of the school meals program, referred to as competitive food and beverages, shall meet state and federal nutrition guidelines. And then it also says 2.3, fundraising groups are included, are must meet state and federal nutrition guidelines. So I'm thinking of like a bake sale. Like how are you <clears throat> going to enforce that? those things meet health, I mean, they never meet health and, and so the, nutrition guidelines. The, the first problem is having a bake sale. Um, what we're hoping to encourage is not having food for your fundraiser. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, according to the policy, they can't have foods that don't meet the standards for a fundraiser. Okay. I don't. I don't know if that's realistic, it just as, as a discussion point. Because I know that it's been a problem in the past that we haven't been able to have bake sales mm -hmm. um, because we were in the federal nu nutrition program. And I know a lot of people were like, oh, good, now we can finally like have bake sales. <laughs> and I know that, I mean, I don't know. Meaning to, at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you go to a bake sale and it's like Rice Krispie treats, chocolate it, chip, cookies. I mean, and I, I get that. Those, I, I don't know. Is, does it have a, I, mean, I a discussion point? I'm not sure that they are doing bake sales at the high school for fundraisers during the school day. They haven't been allowed. to. They can't. Exactly. So yeah. so and I and I think that this this policy continues that they can't do that and that it's encouraging other kinds of fundraisers. Right. So I think Hillary <clears throat> to speak to Hillary's point, one of the it was definitely brought up at some point since we have had the discussions about pulling out of that next one out of pulling out of that national pulling the high school out of the right. national program part of that discussion definitely included this idea that okay now we can sell food at bake sales that is not necessarily compliant because right. we're removing ourselves from that program to begin with so I don't, I don't know that I necessarily, I mean, I understand that this current policy still would prohibit that, and we can discuss whether or not that's something we want to pursue. But to speak to Hillary's point, like, I definitely remember that being right. something that we talked about, too, as being a benefit to withdrawing. To withdrawing, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's during the school day only that, those, that this section applies? Or were you under the impression that that change would apply to... Uh, like when we have a big sale during the school day, I'm not aware of that. Well, I think 
my understanding was that we were never allowed to before, and the reason was always given that we cannot, we couldn't, because we were as we were a part of the federal nutrition program, oh. and that you couldn't, you weren't allowed to offer anything other than the federal nutrition program during school hours. So that was my understanding as well, April, that that pulling out of that program would allow that avenue for, I don't know, anyone who wanted to, to do that during the school day. I'm not saying I necessarily agree or disagree, but it mm -hmm. is something that had been brought up. Yeah. So is that something that the high school does, like during the school day, fundraisers in general? We try to discourage <coughs> things that are not fake sales, because even with allergies, right. kids with allergies, you don't know where the food is coming from, and oh, so forth, so we really discourage any um, sales like that, and they do not have them during yeah. the school day. Yeah, I know, um, like I don't know of any clubs who have had them during the school day, and I, I know that Model UN for one of our activities, we had a bake sale, but it was over the weekend at, it was either like a craft show or like an antique show or something um, at the high school, but I don't know of any during the school day. And that was attended by a lot of adults? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So I, I guess, um, you know, to, to Hillary's point, this um, policy does not change that practice. So okay. we're still saying that during the school day, we're expecting not to have competitive foods that don't meet the standards, but that doesn't mean it, it can't be a topic of conversation. If that's a wish of the high school, now that they are, at least for the time being, out of the program, then we can check with the DOE and say, well, you know, how, how does this work? Um, this is something that we've basically left in place rather than, than changing it up. Can I make a suggestion? Since this is first reading, can we kind of do our homework on this and get these questions answered and then address it or not for a second reading? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. I would love that. It would yeah, be I think, I mean, obviously nobody's done it because it hasn't been allowed, so I guess maybe just maybe putting out some feelers and to see if that's something that people were looking into, knowing that they right. might be able to in the future. And if not, fine. Like let's leave it, leave it well enough alone, and and not encourage it. But if it was, then it's worth a discussion, I think. Well, and and I think the committee is probably going to want to think about the the bigger picture of the philosophical um, stand that we're taking here, and do we want to extend that to those types of events? And you know either with a rule or a suggestion or whatever it may be or with a policy, you're, you're, you're taking a stand that this is the way to do things and this is, this is the best thing for our kids. So that's part of the conversation. Well, if we're consistent with caffeine. <laughs> yeah, we had a sugar conversation too. <laughs> we, had, we, we got pretty deep on that part. I was gonna say, keep going, Hill. Go right down the line. I don't have a copy in front of me, so I hope you don't get too deep. Um, I'm trying to find where my next note is. On page I should know it by heart, right? <coughs> oh, so I guess so. On three point one, um, it talks about food and beverages will not be used as individual student rewards and incentives or withheld for individual students' behavior or performance without administrative approval. So why does it say that an administrator would approve that? Yeah, right. that's my question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm winging it. Um, so the, the short answer to that is that um, for some of our students, food is used as a reward or an incentive um, for students who have IEPs. And so we didn't want to um, risk going against the best educational program for that student mm -hmm. by not having a way for the administrator to say, actually, for this kid, this is appropriate. OK, so I, I thought that might be your answer. I, I would be much more comfortable if the withheld was not eligible to be with administrator approval and only the incentive. I don't. So right now it says that food and beverages can be withheld for individual students' behavior with administrator approval, and I'm not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with it being used as individual student rewards or incentives if that's part of an IEP plan, I'm, but. I think you would risk 
Um, and, you know, I, I might turn to Allison on this, but I, I think you might risk the, um, I mean, obviously no one wants to um, take away something from a child, but if, again, if it's part of instructional programming and it works for that child, um, I don't know that uh, withholding might not be part of that. Would that be wrong, Allison? That makes me uncomfortable. I would be actually in agreement with Silvery. Okay, good. That it's um, not something you would take away. It's something that you might work towards. Okay. So then we should be able to tweak that language and put the without administrative approval in front of the withheld. Okay. And that, then we can make it work. That would make me much more comfortable. Cool. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> uh, no, not you, Allison. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to be here. Oh, oh, perfect. You have to be here. Um, thank you, Allison. <laughs> Carry on, my friend. I only have one more. I only have one more. Um, so the last one is 8.3. Physical activity is important. It talks about that, blah, blah, blah. Um, Denying access to physical activity, including recess, for purposes of makeup work, academic support, testing, et cetera, during the day, is strongly discouraged. <coughs> Actually, okay, I'm okay with that, sorry. So I, I, my, my note is, because the next sentence says, physical activity shall not be used as a consequence for behaviors, and I know that that had been an issue in classrooms in the past where you know your name would get written on the board and you had to stay in from recess, and those were probably the kids who needed to be out at recess the most. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, that sentence is the flip side of that, yeah, where the drop and give me laps. 20, that thing, you know, you, yeah. you, you're out of control, you need to go and do some push-ups. Yeah. Very... Yeah, sorry, you, I was... I was conflating the two sentences. Mm. I, I, that's fine. I mean, if they have, yeah. Okay. I don't, so, I don't have a problem. yeah, the, the heart of that is that physical activity, as you just so eloquently said, is sometimes the most powerful and useful thing in a kid's school day. And so we don't want kids to be restricted from having that, that access and that opportunity. But by the same token, we don't want a teacher to say, you know, you, you need to do some physical activity now because you're a bad person. Right. Um, it's, so it's both sides of that equation that, that you sometimes see. And that was my last note. I think this, I mean, this is obviously a ton of work. Very that's thorough. gone into this. It's very thorough. Um, and I mean, I sounded nitpicky, but really that was like four notes and it's like a really huge document. So. I think you guys have done an amazing job. That was People good nitpicking. That was productive. Really Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always good to get new eyes on this stuff because mm -hmm. sometimes we start talking in circles. Do other people have stuff? <laughs> no, Someone? here's a show off. Everyone? <laughs> I, was gonna say, I had all the same ones. nicely <laughs> done. <laughs> 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 So with the two changes, with 2.3 and 3.1, um, we do have a policy meeting on Wednesday where we can look at, we can address these and bring this back for the second reading in October. Um, with that said, is everyone comfortable with us moving this to um, closing out for the second reading, knowing that policy will take up these two items and have changes when we come back for a second reading? All those in favor? Excellent. 6.4, we have a donation for the backpack program. I don't know about this. Um, we have received a very generous donation of $3,335 from Heather and Brian Puckett for the backpack program. Because Mr. Puckett is a Unum employee, we will also receive a double matching grant for this donation, bringing the total to $10,005. Wow. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Get a little teary. Um, as you may be aware, the backpack program delivers food, non-perishables, as well as fresh produce and meats to students in need and their families so that our neighbors do not go hungry over long weekends and school breaks. The Pockets, who have two children enrolled in our district, have been strong supporters of this program, and this is their sixth large donation in the past six years. And we are very grateful for this steadfast support. We respectfully request that the school board approve acceptance of this donation. So moved. Second. Second. Um, as we open for um, comments, 
I can't say thank you enough to the Paquette family and to Unum. Um, this is an incredibly generous donation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Great. Motion passes. Unanimously, of course. Uh, 6.5, we have some appointments this evening. 6.5.1, a special education teacher. Yes, special ed teacher at the middle school in eight corners. Dylan White has been selected to fill this position due to two maternity leaves. She'll spend half the year um, at the middle school and then the second half of the year at a corner school. Ms. White earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from the University of Southern Maine. She has been a special education tech three with Scarborough Public Schools since 2002. Ms. White will be placed on step one of the bachelor scale per the collective bargaining agreement. And it's a recommendation to appoint Dylan White as a special ed teacher for one year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Again, unanimous. 6.5.2, special services lead teachers. Could please appoint as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I, I just I just want to thank Kate for renaming this um, lead teacher special service department because I think it makes a heck of a lot more sense to do that. It makes sense that um, special services would have lead teachers that are part of the um, leadership team, um, and I think it's commendable that. Um, they're making, they're having um, our special services teachers be an integral part of that leadership team, and all, it really speaks all the work with inclusivity that you guys are doing in the district. So, okay. and I'd really like to thank you, Amy, for making sure that we were in compliance with our contract. Sure. Um, and for all of the work that was done to make sure that everything was aligned. I would like to echo that. Thanks. Um, as chair of negotiations, you've had a lot on your plate, but I can't tell you how much more comfort it brings me and peace of mind it brings me to know that when we are doing these appointments, that this is not just something we're up, down, raising our hand, that you know we have you to have gone through the contract and make sure that everything matches. And so for your work at the previous meeting and for tonight, I, I'm so grateful and I hope that you know that um, there are big shoes to fill. Thank you. Um, we, st we, still we still have work to do. Um, we, we, do have, we have to make sure that our stipends are representative uh, in terms of the monetary stipend, um, in terms of what we approve um, at the meeting, and we'll, we'll clean all that up um, as we continue down this road. All right. All those in favor? Again, it's unanimous. 6.5.3, high school head varsity girls ice hockey coach. Please point as a presented. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes unanimously. 6.5.4, middle school chemical supervisor. Please appoint as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? What is a chemical supervisor? <laughs> Good question. They take care of the um, chemicals that are they in school. They protect us. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I want one. Get it wrong. <laughs> yes. Uh, usually, it's a science teacher, and their um, their role is to make sure that the uh, any chemical inventory that we have for science, um, in most cases, is safely stored and, and inventoried and accounted for. Um, we have them at middle school and high school because that's where the science labs, and that's actually a DOE and statutory requirement. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. All those in favor? Again, unanimous. And knowing now what chemical supervisor is, 6.5.5, the high school chemical supervisor. Please appoint as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? And all those in favor? Again, unanimous. 6.5.6, middle school scheduler. Please appoint as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Is that athletics? No. No. What is that? Scheduling what? 
It's um, schedu scheduling all the classes. How many, how many students in the middle school? So it's scheduling 700 student schedules. It's a nightmare of a job. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> okay, can all I? Those in favor? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go nope, ahead. nope. I can wait. All right, all those in favor? Again, yeah, unanimous. Did I space out, or, or did we not actually vote on the lead teachers for special services? Did we do that? We did. Okay, we did. thank you. <laughs> um, given the way that I've been a little spacey today, I'm glad you're keeping track on me, but um, I appreciate that. 6.6, .6, motion to approve the purchase of a van for Mobility Works in order to accommodate all of our students. So, okay, great. Thank you, Kate. If anyone would like to have a paper copy of the email that we received from the superintendent on September 12th, Kate has paper <coughs> copies. Um, this request is uh, in response to an immediate need that has arisen within the district. We have a student who, because of mobility reasons, is unable to get to school currently um, with our current bus situation, with which, with which buses are handicap accessible versus the routes that those buses have to run. Um, this proposal was brought to the Finance Committee um, where we had a lengthy discussion about the pros and cons of um, purchasing the bus, uh, the van rather. Um, to be clear, the motion tonight is actually um, in reference to policy DBJ, which is actually the line item transfers that are necessary in order to make the purchase happen. So we're not actually approving the purchase necessarily. But um, if we are to move forward with the purchase of the van, it, the board action requires us to approve the line item transfers. So um, my motion is to move to approve to authorize the budget transfers per policy DBJ as presented by the business office. And so moved. Second. Discussion. <laughs> yes. Can you give us a little bit of Can you give us a little bit of the backstory maybe for um, anyone who's not reading this letter about Yeah, or maybe Sarah can too. Would you like like you to do it? Sure, Sarah. I I would Thank I want to be really respectful of student privacy and all of those things. So Right. Well, I'm just I guess I'm just wondering has this been a need before and and it is it comes and goes and is now currently another need? So it has always been a need and we've always just struggled to get through it. So we have four students in the district that are in wheelchairs that we are responsible to transport. To make a long story short, we are fortunate that one set of parents is just determined to transport their own child. One child goes to school late um, at the parent's request and the other two students don't go to school at the same time. So what we had is in the past, I've always ordered a bus or two to make sure that if we go on field trips and a wheelchair accessible bus is available, we have big buses so that that student can ride with their classmates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we fast forward to this year, we set up the bus runs the same way, and when we put a wheelchair on a big bus, we take out five or six seats, we add a seat taken out for an adult to sit with that child, and now we don't have room on the bus for all the other kids that are scheduled to ride it. So we haven't been using our small special ed buses <coughs> for the fact we don't have enough drivers to do it. So we've been putting them on the big buses and now we've hit a roadblock where there is no option to put them on those buses or we have a bunch of kids that are late for school. So I have asked, graciously asked people, whether it be group homes or parents, to help us out for a short period of time to transport a couple of students to school for us until we could figure out a solution. This is the only solution that I have come up with and it seems to fit the needs of the whole department. So can I just clarify, in order to drive a, the van, you don't need a special license? You do not is need a special license. Is that the difference license. here? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna look like any minivan that the school department has. It's a Dodge Caravan. It looks just like the one sitting next to it in the parking lot. Unless you came up behind it or you got inside it, you would not know what the difference was. Okay. 
Thank you. Any other questions? I, I just I just want to say that um, I think the other important point about this in terms of DGE is that um, the superintendent has the right, according to the policy, to kind of forego the uh, RFP process if if there are special circumstances that we need to really move on this. So I think that applies in this case as well in terms of our superintendent supporting this purchase in this manner. Sorry, me again. I just wanted to say that this uh, document is part of the packet for tonight. So if there's folks at home who are looking at this and they want to go online and look at the agenda, they'd be able to see the whole story um, there as well. Thank okay. you. That's a great point, Kate. So um, in terms of the line item transfer, you're asking for the school. What, what was the motion? Can you repeat that? Yep. The motion is to approve the authorized budget transfers. So, so because, because policy... The, because policy dictates that we do not need to approve transfers... Um, Kate, is there supposed to be... Oh, I see. So $11,000 of the total, pri, uh, total cost does not require a line transfer. Um, so then we're doing two separate transfers, one for $10,000 from bus department gasoline and another for $14,000 from bus department supplies. That's the motion. So I just want to be clear. I mean, I've asked for DBJ, which is mm -hmm. the relevant policy to be reviewed in policy committee, and I know that Lance put that on... Um, in the parking lot for us to, to review in the, in the future. But we, my understanding was that the Finance Committee already made that decision and that the, that the, I don't know, whatever, the Finance Department has already gone ahead and, and moved with that purpose, right? And no, that's not what's happening. We, we tabled the decision and brought it to the full board um, for discussion to, so that we would have this public discussion about the van. Um, they were, the van company held the van for because us. Because they were willing yes. to hold the van. Okay. Yes. Um, so, I mean, uh, just for purposes of and not belaboring the point, but, um, I, you know, I think that we, this is something that we should discuss about best practices and, and how we implement that policy, and that's my hope to do that um, in the policy committee. The, it's unfortunate from um, my perspective that it comes at a time with such an imminent need of, of um, accessibility for a student as well as potential implications to other kids on the um, bus run so that we can't really slow this down and, and have um, more of a discussion now. Um, and so that that's the reason why I supported um, this at the committee. I just want to I just want to ask one more thing, just so people know, because I, I am I'm assuming I know the answer to this. But um, Sarah, I assume that like once this this immediate need is done, you will you will. It's not like we're going to use the van this year and then we won't need it again. Can you? Speak no, there a is bit an to option in the van that it will hold a wheelchair student or anybody in a wheelchair. If that need goes away, which I cannot foresee happening. There is an option that in the back of that where the wheelchair would sit, there's a bench seat that lays down and you can use it as a regular van. Okay. I just wanted to make it clear to anybody who's watching that this isn't like a one-time purchase for a few for a need that's for a few months. I mean, this is going to be continually used from now on. We have four vans on the assumption. road currently right now. Unfortunately for me at two o'clock, one broke down and there wasn't even an extra one to help us out. We have four vans that go to four out-of-district schools every day. Okay. So the use of a van and the need for a van is not going anywhere. That's, that's what I was getting at, yeah. Well, and, and Hillary, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that popped into my head as I was looking over this is that um, <clears throat> the need right now is immediate and obvious and, and defined, but certainly we're only one phone call away from an unknown need that could crop up at any time. And God forbid you could have a student that got injured and may have to make accommodations on the fly. So having this type of a vehicle at our disposal, even if it's not needed on the first day of school, I think it makes us more responsible to our community and our ability to service the students where they are. 
So I, I think it's a really good move. Even if we didn't need it right now, I, I think it's good for us to have a vehicle like this that's available. You said that much better than it. That's exactly what I meant. Well, so the one, <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna play devil's advocate and say the one distinction I would like to make is that that's an excellent conversation to have when we're <coughs> building a budget. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now is making an, you know, a decision to make a, a fairly large purchase. And in order to do that, we are having to shuffle <coughs> money from one bucket into another bucket. Um, that's never something that I am super comfortable about doing because it, the, partially because the optics of it are not great. That, oh, well, we just have $35,000 that if we just pull from all of our little pails, then you know, we can make this happen. The truth is, and we talked about this in finance, is we will end up going without something to make this purchase happen. We don't necessarily know what that something is right now, but we do not have you know, the flexibility in our budget to make these kind of purchases, even if they are absolutely the right thing for the district in general, you know, on a whim. And so this is something that we're doing, we're moving forward to solve a problem that is in front of us right now, and you know, that's why I would recommend the line on, you know, that's why I support the line item transfers in this case. Thank you. All right. So all those in favor of the motion to approve the purchase of a van for mobility works. Okay. Unanimous. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. 7.0. Can I have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 40560 for the purpose of discussing the superintendent contract to return to a public session? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Okay, unanimous. We'll be back.
around town, the library. Um, okay, thank you for sticking with us. Um, just to catch people up, there is a new state law that went into effect today. Uh, it came under legislation 1220, and it removes some stipulations that we had on rehiring or hiring a retired superintendent. And two of the stipulations were the years of service as well as paying 75% of the salary. So what we were discussing was in order for Scarborough to be compliant with the law as it became in effect today, um, I will be asking for permission to re-enter into contract negotiations for the salary so that we are under state law with our superintendent. Um, so I'm asking for a motion to allow me to re-enter negotiations to discuss the salary for our superintendent. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, so based on the approvals, just to kind of finish, finish up before I vote, um, Sandy and I can have that conversation. I will need to come back to the board and make sure that everybody is in agreement before we can execute the contract at that point. So with that said, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, point 8.0, motion to adjourn. Um, oh. Before we adjourn, I just, Nick, do you want to speak to the? Oh, sure. Just give a little blur. Uh, So we have some um, some pamphlets, some public. I'm looking at the audience. There's no one here um, <laughs> to promote the building steering committee and the application that we've put out uh, recruiting community members. Um, so that application is up. It is active. Um, it is accessible on the website, and it is out through next Friday. Uh, that's the 27th. And so any community members that are interested and have not um, already filled that out, we strongly encourage them to do so. And uh, we'll actually be getting more out soon to come about how that group's going to get together and our next steps. So it's going to move quickly. So I encourage everyone to keep their eyes open. Um, but you'll see some pamphlets like this around town that'll just help us get the word out a little more um, old fashioned paper. There's, it's also on our website. Yes. It's also on the town's website. It's been in the town newsletter. We sent it out via Swift, Re Swift Reach. Mm -hmm. Each of our building principals also sent it out, and we have created several Facebook posts to help advertise. And them. Instagram and Twitter. And Instagram and Twitter. Well, there we go. So. It's out there. It's out there. <laughs> okay, okay, now. Sorry. All right. So motion to So moved. Second. Okay. And all those in favor. Fantastic. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you.